Hello everyone and welcome back to another episode. My name is Hans. I'm Edward. And we are your hosts for now and forevermore. <laughs> At least we hope. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So over the last couple of episodes, if you've been subscribed, if you've been tuning in quite often, you'll know we've spoken about digital rights management, um, subscriptions to do with games and entertainment media and so on and so forth. So today we're going to look at what happens when you merge these different facets of industries together to create something new and unique that potentially allows for greater engagement. In this sense, and in particular, we are going to be speaking about gamification and how you can identify things within your normal life that may have been gamified. <laughs> Pretty much. So uh, the reason why we're talking about this topic today is uh, because I'm fairly learned in the subject. I did a master's thesis, which had a lot of elements to do with gamification. Um, and Edward and I have over a decade of uh, experience as journalists within the games industry. And therefore, you know, we have a pretty good idea of how gamification has been implemented in <clears throat> a variety of different sectors within a variety of industries. Some yeah. of which you may not even realize have now have elements of gamification. So to start off with, what is gamification? Edward, do you want to you want to take a stab at that before I go on and give the uh, academic well, version? <laughs> my my unlearned exp um, <laughs> opinion, I guess. Uh, gamification <clears throat> essentially comes down to the fact that it's just gamifying something, and in that I'm we mean you something that you would normally do ad nauseum. Let's say read a book let's say, mm -hmm. learn a language. Um, essentially, some company or someone will come in and add a leaderboard. Let's, uh, like, even Apple is doing it in iBooks. Uh, like, yes, you've got five minutes cool. left to read this yes. today. And um, <laughs> it, it, it's, it's <clears throat> incorporating um, social boards. And uh, your friend um, read 10 minutes today. See if you can beat this. It, it's essentially yes. just adding gaming elements to, to stuff. Um, Look, and making you, you've it more actually, fun. You've actually done a very good job of explaining what gamification is, because that is technically what it's about. It's mm. it's essentially a strategic means of using elements that are generally found within video games, but and taking those elements and using them to enhance certain um, you know systems, services, organizations in order to increase engagement by the end user. That's essentially mm. all that it is. So, you know, in this most rudimentary sense, you know, if you think about a video game, people enjoy video games for a myriad of reasons, most of which are these elements of competing with your yeah. friends, strangers, family, whatever the case may be. Now, if you take these somewhat competitive elements, which I might like to add as well, um, are not necessarily exclusive to video games. These competitive elements also um, stem from sports, which is why esports is a thing, but I guess we'll save that topic for another episode. And um, it's just a, a very, it's very interesting to look at how um, these models are slowly being ingrained into almost everything we do, especially in the digital age. Like Edward brought up a very good example of how Apple Books does this thing of, oh, you've reached five minutes of reading today. Congratulations. Can you make it to 10? So naturally, that's a, it's such a simple prompt, but subconsciously you're like, oh, I could totally do 10. I'm sure I yeah, can find like, another five minutes in my day to do this. Exactly. I, 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 I can beat, I can beat Bethany who has 15 minutes, you know? <laughs> <laughs> but Bethany... <laughs> <laughs> so that essentially is what gamification is all about. And it is extensively used, weirdly enough, or at least for a long period of time within marketing, because a lot of campaigns have, especially in the past, and you will see it in a lot of campaigns today, where they use elements of um, go to our website and like most recently, Cadbury was like, go to the website and find the Easter egg on the website. And if you can find the mm. Easter egg or the Easter bunny, you will get so many points towards possibly putting you into this pool to win a grand prize. That, 
for all intents and purposes, is gamification. Whether or I not mean, people realize it or not, that's what it is. <laughs> I mean, even supermarkets are doing it these days. Like, like a local shop we go to is called Pick and Pay. And they recently had these stickers that you just collect every time you spend like 100 bucks. <laughs> and after like 500 stickers, you get a free steak, uh, knife kit. It's, that's gamification. So you're Isn't spot it? on. Actually, yes, it is. No, you're, you're 100% correct. Actually, when you mentioned that, you actually made me all of a sudden regress even further back into my life. And I immediately thought of when I was nine years old. And yeah. I was collecting those um, so the the Lion King marbles from the oh my engines, gosh, yes. right? Yeah. Right. Little did we know that was gamification. So yeah. what 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 is what is interesting about that though is back then it wasn't classified as gamification. It was just mm-hmm. classified as um, a collectible collection. Yeah. But in a way, having a collection that you want to finish. And for full, and knowing you have friends and family who are also collecting, what do they have? Can you trade? Can you compete? Would be some of the earliest forms of gamification before the term was created as such. Yeah, <laughs> like like the the, the Tazo discs in the packets of yes. chips that you collected, the, the yes. Pokemon and the, the Dragon Ball Z ones. It was huge, and wow. Uh, it really stems back much further than I originally thought it would. <laughs> well, see, this is the most like, surprising thing. And and the, the reason for that is because marketers have been using aspects of um, gamification for decades now. It's just that it never really had a term. Hmm. Now, you know, over the, the many years, so let's say within the 90s, it, this actually only really gained traction within the uh, mid to late 2000s where companies were like actively throwing the word gamification around and they were like yeah. oh we're going to gamify this oh we're going to gamify that of course it doesn't always work um because the thing with with gamification is it's very nuanced you yeah. know reading a a book for example as we're talking about now and apple's like oh you've reached your 5 minutes that's great that's that's cool because they've now taken the goal oriented aspect of video games you know where you have quests and goals that you need to finish and do and they've implemented it to that but yeah. it wouldn't be great if they were like, oh, you've read 100 words today. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, it's, like, it's, that's it's such an, it's Yeah, it, it's, it's such a unique, it's very nuanced. So gamification is not something that can be applied to everything. Um, and that is something that was quite interesting in the early 2010s, where almost every company was trying to gamify everything that they were doing and yeah. failing at it, like failing quite miserably. because. There are certain things that shouldn't be gamified, like um, you know, take like medicine for example. You know, or politics like it, or, or politics. Actually, actually, I, I would love if, if politics were gamified. To be honest, okay. like, I, like... Think, I think that would be quite interesting because because then then you'd be banking on popular opinion, you know, popular public opinion. Actually, yeah, right. Versus versus uh, what the politicians think. Right. So what's yeah. actually happening with us right now is, um, I suppose, I know we're talking about gamification now, but do you know what I think would be so interesting? And I don't think this is actually a term and I haven't Googled it, but memification, because I feel That's that the current, the current 2020s, we meme everything and yeah. it's getting to a point now where you actually find the latest news within memes. I mean, that's how I learned about what was happening with Johnny Depp and Amber Heard and how I learned about uh, Russia invading Ukraine. It wasn't the news. It was because of memes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I get I mean, that. And I... <laughs> that's, uh, um, I think it's, it's, it's separate still. It's, uh, um, it, you can't attribute <clears throat> memification to gamification. And, <laughs> or or rather, rather, let me put it this way. Some things are good at, with gamification. Other things are good with memification. I think doing the news with memes is excellent. You can't do I think the news with they're, gamification. They're somewhat part and parcel. I mm. think I, I think that memes okay, they've always existed. They've always been around for a very long time. But I don't think yeah. they could have possibly existed without gamification. I know that maybe it's a bit of a controversial take, 
but it's just more along the lines of if you look at what memes are, okay, so memes poke fun at things, right? Mm-hmm. But they're also poking fun at the elements which could be related to gamification. Actually, you are spot on in, in <laughs> somewhat. If Reddit's upvote system didn't exist, <laughs> memes wouldn't exist. Right, there we go. So, so, <laughs> see, so in, in other words, what we're getting at is popularity is an element of gamification yeah. that can be utilized to push an agenda. Yep. And in, well, not, not necessarily to push an agenda, but to harness the engagement of public opinion. Yeah. Because as Edward is saying now, how does a meme become popular? A meme only becomes popular because there is a system to allow that meme to become popular. And that system yeah. is a voting system. And the voting system technically is a system of uh, gamification where you yeah. actively choose to support something or not and see where it goes. <laughs> or or a, a good example of this is when PewDiePie um, he, he made a video and said, oh, make this Reddit post um, only have 69, 69, 69, 69. So every time you, you, you <laughs> every time it's like six. 100,900 and what, what, and it's not 69 at the end. You upvote it or downvote it to make it be that. And that was a whole era of its own. Um, you see, you so, see, so, so the, the interesting thing about gamification as a whole, right, is that it can very much be broken down into a variety of subsections. Yeah. So you right now are talking about like a voting subsection. But yes. that technically falls under user engagement. But the thing is, there are so many other facets towards what is considered gamification. And they include things like goals, learning, skills, achievements. Now, that's a great one, which we'll come back to. Challenges, rewards, competition, other forms of user engagement. So, you know, it's a very interesting means of looking at things. So if we do look at the whole Reddit or even, you know what, if you look at voting, the political system is a game for the most part because you have political parties, right? You have political parties which each have an agenda and those agendas spur user engagement, all right? But in addition to that, they also spur competition. So these are all aspects of of the the gamification as a whole. Now, now of course, we're, I am reaching a little bit here because ideally, in the traditional sense, gamification is taking these elements and using them to enhance a product, a service, or, or, or something purely from a user engagement perspective. Because we all know the more that someone uses something, the, the more popular it becomes. And that's basically mm. social media in a nutshell. Actually, social media companies are the primary... Uh, focal points for gamification in the modern era. Uh, You know, with all of the things that they use in terms of like Facebook reactions, um, you know, becoming a a top fan on a page on Facebook, for example, you know, that that gives you a sense of accomplishment. It's an achievement. Um, Oh, look at me. I have this badge I can display. All of these are elements of gamification. Yeah. (laughs) It's it's actually weird. It's it's everywhere. Uh, it's literally everywhere. See, it's, this is the thing. It, it, it used to not be anywhere. Yeah. And then through the popularity of video games, which is a multi-billion dollar industry, um, everybody wanted to get a piece of the pie. And so a lot of companies have done their very best and for the most part have failed spectacularly to really get anywhere in terms of real gamification. Mm. Um, but others have succeeded quite well. I would yeah. say that... Um, Banks in South Africa have done an incredible job of gamification in terms of getting their users to spend more within closed ecosystems. Um, I say this specifically with regards to Discovery Miles and um, FNB's eBucks. And the reason mm. why I mention this is because we both know that in each of these walled gardens, because generally gamifications take place in walled gardens, you are implored as the user to do certain things to get rewards. Uh, So discovery is probably, I would say, one of the best examples of gamification in South Africa. Oh, for sure, yeah. Um, 
I, I am someone who subscribed. I have their medical aid. I have their banking. I have their insurance. And the reason for that, first of all, is by taking more products with them, you reach a different tier automatically within their whole vitality tier system. And mm-hmm. because of that, it means that I immediately have an advantage in terms of the points I need within each tier to get better discounts. In addition to yeah. that, the more I exercise, the more points I get. And the more points I get, the better my discounts once again. So, you know, Discovery has even gone so far as to include a gambling element to their gamification system, <clears throat> whereby when you have enough points, you earn um, slot picks. And that gives you the option of picking a random tile on a dashboard and behind that tile is an amount. And that amount gets converted into discovery miles, which are which can be converted into real money. So, so the incentive here is by keeping healthy and using all your products with discovery and driving well and filling up only the gas stations that they approve, you will obtain greater discounts at the end of the day. And the best part about it, and please understand, I'm not advocating Discovery Bank here or Discovery in general. I'm just talking about the, the superb level of user engagement that they're able to draw from their users through gamification. It truly is a sublime example of gamification done right. So essentially, (laughs) incentification turned into gamification. (laughs) Because all it is is incentive-based. I would say... That's a huge thing. Look, look. Incentivizing is part of gamification. So if you've incentivized a user to do something, you've used a form of gamification to get them to do it. Yeah, that's all it is. <clears throat> so it Because it's all, it's all about, look, it's about rewards and competition, right? So in the Discovery Health mm. app, for example, you can invite users to compete with. So for yeah. example, Edward, if you were on Discovery and I was on Discovery, I could actually invite you to compete with you um, in terms of health goals. And then all of a sudden, now we're using the competitive element of gamification. But then, in addition to that, there's also a rewards element. Because the more you do, the more rewards you get. And then, as a result, you achieve money. You That's the achievement, is money. Yeah. <laughs> and all of this is, is user engagement. Because now, I'm more inclined to get to, to engage with the app, to use the app, to invite people to the app. To speak about it on my podcast. <laughs> yeah, that's the thing. Um, if you look at incentivization and incentives and stuff, <clears throat> it's very momentary. Whereas mm. gamification is a continuous thing. You 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 continue to to strive to get more points, to to get more e bucks and get better incentives <laughs> as a reward. Yes. Then yeah, because it's, yeah. it's actually amazing. I, look, I dig that. A- Apple it's is also everywhere. a very look. Apple is a, is a great um, pioneer of this within their health apps. So mm. take the Apple Watch for example. Okay, w- with the Apple Watch, you can choose to directly compete with people in the the health portion of the app for exercise, or you can share health data. Yeah, both of which are means of getting the user to engage with your device and your software ecosystem, mm. you know? And the way the Apple Watch works, for example, is they give you like rewards. Like if you manage to um, close all your rings in a day, you get a reward. If you exercise for more than seven times in a week, you get another reward. Then they'll sometimes have other rewards, which as Edward has said, is all about incentivization where they, they're they like, oh, you can get this limited edition badge, which is arbitrary and means absolutely nothing, but you know you want it. And you will do the exercise. You want to show it off. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. You'd be like, oh, look, I I got the May Day bad. Did you? You know? (laughs) Like literally every night after you, you've worked out, I I get, uh, oh, Hans Hopps has finished his ring, (laughs) has closed his ring. You can still do it. And I'm like, I know I can. And I should. But you're not going to. (laughs) But I'm lazy. Ah, <laughs> uh, you see now, Edward. Now you see now. If you were fully ingrained in this whole discovery and Apple Watch ecosystem, because obviously I only get those discovery miles and those extra perks and rewards if I actually go to the gym. Yep. So, I mean, don't get me wrong. I love the gym as it is, so I probably go anyway. But like, it's so great to be rewarded for it. And this is now the big thing about gamification, which a lot of people miss. 
And it has to do with the whole endorphins aspect of it. So Mm -hmm. it is very well known for a long period of time that the reason why games are so enjoyable, I, I don't want to say addictive because that's a negative term, but why games are so enjoyable and why people continue to come back to playing video games is because they release endorphins. You know, when you're playing a game and you manage to achieve something, that makes you feel good because your brain is releasing the chemicals to make you feel good. You feel like you've earned something, you've achieved it, whether it's defeating a boss in Elden Ring or making it to a new level in the platform of your choice or going up a rank in Apex Legends. All of these things feel good to you because they felt like a journey. They felt like you, you've put an effort, you've, you, you've done what you needed to do to get there and now you're receiving your just rewards. So yeah. what's interesting about that, and perhaps this is where the, the ethical component comes in of should you be gamifying things? And if you do gamify them, how are you gamifying them in a way so as not to become addictive? That's, I, I, I am hesitant to use that word, but essentially that is what it comes down to at the end of the day. And or, or, the, 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 the reason why I have to mention this is because the gambling industry is very much geared towards gamifying the things that they do to draw people in to spend money mm. and that's now that, again that's a very different thing altogether because they're not really relying on um user they're not really drawing in user engagement from a perspective of skill learning achievements or goals it's more of a you know a, a chance element which again is very different it's um it's a, a very randomized version of it But it still applies because you can use all of these elements, especially for people who are, um, you know, people who are goal oriented, people who want to want to get something out of something, you know. Um, Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. Yeah. It's essentially gambling gamifies addiction. And I know that's that's a very crass way of putting it. But no, that's that's actually a great way of looking at it. Yeah. Um, Sad, but true. That's. Yeah, and and I think that's where you have to draw the line. Like, it might be even it might be difficult to 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 when you gamify your systems, whether it's just language based learning, whether it's reading a book, you you have to figure out where that line is between addiction and just being innocent fun. And I think that's why, if, well, if you look at look, it very closely, stuff like a top earn a top fan badge is literally just that it's technically nothing and which is a good <laughs> thing you know but do you um, feel it's nothing though do, do the people who get them no, feel like there's nothing ex- exactly <laughs> but 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 Look, then you get hmm? no i just wanted to say that the whole um you know addiction element and gambling is you you ask a question you're like what is that line so just to you really just speak about that just for a moment. That line is when you start making decisions that negatively impact your life, despite the enjoyment received from whatever it is you're doing. And by that, I mean, if you're playing uh, any sort of free-to-play title that has in-game purchases, Apex is the one I'll use because it's it's my favorite one. It's the one that I'm I'm always invested in. I have expendable income. I have enough expendable income that I can buy whatever I want in Apex whenever I feel like it and not worry about it impacting my life. However, Mm. however, the difference is if Apex was the kind of game that you consistently play all the time, right? And then you start ignoring uh, familial obligations, friends, family, work obligations in order to play the game or possibly spend money on the game, money that you can't afford to be spending on the game, that's when it's a problem. Yeah. More so than anything else. But would you put that, that, um, on the, on the creator of the game or on the individual? Like, Uh, ah, no. Okay. So that is a fantastic question, Edward. And that I feel is a very nuanced discussion because, hmm, it, it all depends on the aspects of gamification that are being used, right? Because I, I keep referring back to gamification because that's technically what this is about. So 
you know, there is a difference between full on gambling and then elements of gamification to spur user engagement. There is actually quite a difference between the two. Mm. Um, I think that pure gambling is very much a negative. But then again, at the same time, ideally, regardless of whether we're speaking about gambling or whether we're speaking about an addictive video game, it should be down to the user to control themselves. I don't Mm. feel that it's... Look, now the reason why I say that is because, yes, there is a physiological element to winning, right? The endorphin rush, you feel good. However, that rush, you technically are, you're looking for it. That's why you gamble, you know, because you you feel you're going to win, you feel you're going to win, you feel you're going to win. So you feel like you have that rush the whole time. But that rush, in my personal opinion, is very different to consuming a chemical which actively changes has physical physiological changes on the brain and what i mean by that is you i don't feel that you can hold gambling to the same uh degree as alcohol or nicotine or uh any hard drug does that make sense oh yeah of course because yeah, because yeah. because substances have an actual physio- physiological change on the body and the brain Whereas, I suppose it could be argued that over a long period of time, something like gambling could as well, you know, that adrenaline rush for feeling like you're going to win the whole time. But between Mm. them, personally speaking, it is much more difficult to break from something that physiologically changes you, you know, as in like nicotine, for example, is addictive because it physically renders the, um, the, you know, the, the parts in the body to become used to the nicotine. So you need more nicotine and then, you know, you have withdrawal symptoms. You know, you don't exactly have a withdrawal symptom from gambling. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you, know, you, yeah. You, either, you either do it because you're enjoying it or you don't because you don't have any more money. <laughs> it's not the well, same. <laughs> or you take out some loans. And yeah, okay. Yeah, but that, that's it. a whole, that's a whole, <laughs> a whole, a whole different, you know, aspect. Yeah, but do you, do you get what I'm saying though, right? Like, I like, do get you. Yeah. In, in, in a video game, because now we're talking about games, games, right? Not actually gamification of elements anymore. But like, if you take a game like Apex, you're never forced to buy the stuff. It's Mm -hmm. always an option. Sure, Mm. don't get me wrong. They have collection events where you have to basically buy. Otherwise, you don't get any of the cool stuff. But it's still your choice. You don't have to buy into the collection Mm. event if you don't want to. You know, it's it's literally a choice. It's, no one is forcing. It's not like there's some physiological change that is occurring in your body that is forcing you to have to do it. That, you know, what they're giving you is a form of <clears throat> engagement brought on by, you know, rewards or mm. challenges or something else, which is true gamification. Okay. <laughs> yeah. And that I took a bit of a turn. That's, I just, I didn't, wasn't really <laughs> seeing us going no, in that no, direction. No, uh, it, it's good to <laughs> ask and answer these questions. So I appreciate Look, that. Uh, yeah, I suppose before we, we, we end it off, um, I would also like to point out that one of the, the bigger sort of um, institu- or, or industries that uses gamification is education. Um, so yeah. we see this within applications like Duolingo, um, you know, where you have little pop-ups and scorecards and rewards for, for doing whatever course you're doing, um, which, which can be used to spur on, you know, the, the user for, to continue doing it. Um, but I do know that what is interesting about it is when gamification is done properly within the educational space, mm-hmm. you will actually find that a large majority of children are in favor of gamification elements within the education system. Because they felt that, you know, um, <clears throat> points allowed them to engage a little bit more. Um, or they liked the fact that there was different, different difficulties, you know, for like, let's say, maybe uh, a student that's, that's less strong within maths, but stronger in English. You know, they can excel in different areas and then, then allows yeah. them to still feel good about it. Um, and as a result, you know, having leaderboards to compete with, regardless of where you fall in the leaderboard, or, or rather... They would do like a top five only out of a class of like 15 because nobody wants to be at the bottom of the 15. Do you know what I mean? Um, it gives yeah. them incentive, as you were saying, to work harder, to do better, to perform, outperform, you know? Yeah. There are, there are a lot of positives to it, in my personal opinion. 
<laughs> oh, of course. When, when I, done the right way, you know? Yes. See, I think gamification is very much the way to go if you do anything, pretty much. Um, just giving someone that incentive of, of being better, you know, whether, whether yeah. it's education, whether, as you said, whether it's recording a podcast, I guess, is a form <laughs> of gamification. Um, it's, it's just that, that feeling at the end of the day, knowing that, oh, I got a few clicks on my creation is a good thing. Um, so no. even uh, <laughs> see, Edward, hold on, hold on, hold on. So there is a perversion to gamification, and yes. that is social media. I did mention that I earlier. Get that just just yes. briefly, um, you know. So it can be used in good ways, and I, su- I suppose the very negative way is how the Zuck and the rest of the social media gurus out there have really used these elements of false achievement, which I suppose it always is, right? And false popularity more so. It's more so popularity to create these networks that rely on, oh my gosh, that rely on endorphins the entire time. Because truth be told, when you get that like, when you get that share, you feel good. You know, when but when nobody interacts with is, you at all, you feel ignored. <laughs> what I'm saying is for creators such as the podcast, like yes, we want to be yes, shared I and it, it's good to be the best podcast. <laughs> um, so in a way, you gamify it yourself, I guess, by relying on this endorphins. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah. All right. Okay, well... I believe that this is the the natural conclusion to this episode, Edward. How do you feel? Good, good. Yeah, I dig it. Well, for those of you it- who have been listening and who, or if you watch, thank you so much for tuning in. Did you enjoy what we spoke about today? If you did, let us know. Also, give us your opinion. What what do you think Please. about gamification? Are there examples we possibly missed out on? or we didn't uh, exactly speak about are are there things we maybe missed out on here in this discussion what what else would you like us to speak about in a future episode by all means let us know and until then we hope that you're well and we'll see you all again soon ciao for now bye